Hello and welcome back to Sacred Fates, the channel that aims to bring you the views and experiences of products in the market today, brought to you by Average Vapor. Now this week I've got something really, really interesting. It's a sequel to one of the biggest selling mods of last year, which may be surprised to some people, may not. It's this. The Smock Mag Grip Kit. Now... There's nothing else you can say about Smock. I've covered a few of their products over the course of this channel, so I won't go into necessarily the backstory of them. But this is a very interesting product, mainly because the original mag was quite controversial when it was released for the gun magazine type design. So the fact that they've changed the design so radically maybe is an indication that Smock realised that may not have been the best idea. So... Is this a better version and is this well worth your interest? Before we find out, let's give her a vape. Now, first and foremost, the box. That's the packaging, the front cover. On the back, you've got all your contents, warnings, etc. A little bit about the coils on that side. Scratch code. And that's about it. So get the box open. It's a typical smock box. If you've owned smock before, you'll know what that means. So we get the box open now. Now that's where the mods would be. As always, the mods next to me, not in the box. But nice little flip up. And what you get inside is a bit of a mess. It's not it's not pre-packaged because I have had to dig around in here before, but get a little battery card. You get smock warranty card. You get a nice little instruction booklet. Shoot. Yeah, not bad. Probably in a few different languages. You get an 18650 battery adapter. You get spare O-rings. You get USB cable. And you get two, two coils and a spare glass. Let's get the glass out. There you go. And you get two coils. Now the two baby version two coils. This one is the quad mesh coil. 0.15 resistance. Let me just get the recommended power for you. It doesn't seem to be on here. There we go. 45 to 60 now this has the this is the s1 the quad mesh is called the s2 this is the s1 it's 0.15 again but it's recommended up to 75 to 80 watts i've been vaping at a 75 now i'm not going to cover the tank too much mainly because it's the same tank that was in the v9 kit but just a bigger version of it so I just mainly focus on the mod for this review, but quick overview. The mod, actually we'll start with the tank. Tank, you know, you get is a 5 mil capacity bubble glass tank, replaceable A10 drip tip. Button release there, push it in, and you manually swing it open to reveal fill hole. Bottom adjustable airflow, and covered the coils already. So we'll get on to the mod. Now the mod has a very unique design, designed to fit in your hand, almost like a remote control or a drill handle. It's bottom magazine, like before, press that button to release, out pops the magazine. It's a 21700 device, single battery, or with the adapter it's 18650. Um, the wattage is 100 watts with the 21700. Or it's 85 watt with the 18650. It has trigger for fire. And now we'll get onto the actual menu system now. It's five clicks turns it on. And you get taken to that window. Uh, which lets you pick what battery you're using. So it's not auto detecting. To select things as well before we continue. It's holding the trigger button not pressing it. And you have to use your two navigation buttons there to control it. So, five clicks. Locks the device. Five clicks unlocks. Now, three clicks. 
I take you into the menu. Now you have mode, you have puff, you have settings, and you have power. So we'll start with mode. A lot to hold it then. So you have what? You have TI, nickel, stainless steel, just called steel. Now, when you go into each one, just a quick run through, hold it in. That takes you to a preheat setting. So you've got normal, hard, and soft. Set it to normal. That will take you then back out to the menu. Back in again for mode. Now, I won't go through each one of these, but when you pick each temperature control, you have strength. So you pick that. You, have, you pick your resistance. And then that will then take you to the power mode. I'm sorry, not power mode. Temperature mode, as you can see. So we'll, That's for each one of them. There's no point in going through them all. There's no bypass, and there's no... TCR mode, just regular temperature control. Now back into the menu again. Puff just says what the maximum puffs are and max puffs. So, yeah, we're not going to reset the puffs there. Settings you have stealth mode that turns the screen off. Contrast, contrast of the screen. Adjust ohms if you want to manually adjust them if you're using a RDA or RTA on here Download for the latest update and that's it There we go and that's pretty much it and plus the power will turn the device off Now just quick look at the screen. You've got your regular information wattage volts battery indicator seconds and power mode and that's it so we've covered the device now we'll get into the pros and cons of it now the first pro for me is going to be the way the device is built it feels absolutely fantastic it's really sturdy it is heavy i will mention that it is a heavy device in fact i've got the original mag here just a side by side comparison and yeah it's it's obviously thinner and this is lighter i mean it hasn't got batteries in it at the minute but this is definitely a lighter device even though there's half the amount of batteries in this i don't know how they've managed to do that but it does feel really well made next pro for me is going to be the battery life it, i can get a get about four to five hours on a single 21700 which isn't bad that's through regular use not through obviously chain vaping constantly just using it in the house battery life lasted really well now next pro for me is going to be nice simplistic menu i've never been a fan of the smock menu system or the old version if they seem to have eradicated it now and they did sort of hint at it with the ePriv and the Species, but not the Species, just the ePriv, but they've done away with it. It's a nice, simple system, nice and easy to use, plenty of options if you build your own coils. You know, so the fact that it's simple makes it a really useful device. Next pro for me is going to be the size of it, the comfort, as I say, just for comparison. I mean, that was really comfortable at the time. You know, it fits really well in the hand. So this device, I say even more molded into your hand. It's nice and comfortable on the trigger there. I say this part, it's like a lip, so it fits directly on your hand. You know, you can use it both handed as well. So yeah, really comfortable to hold and carry. I love the fact that it's plenty of space on the top. Easily fit what? Maybe up to 30 mils, maybe just a touch under, 30 mils, 30 millimeters. <laughs> so yeah, you, plenty of space on the top, despite the fact that it's on this side. Um, screen, nice and bright, nice and clear. No complaints there, so that's a pro. Uh, as always, same as the original mag, that's nice and easy. See, nice easy release. And 
five clicks turns it back on. Um, now, what I mentioned with the, I won't, I say I don't want to cover old ground with the tank, but in terms of the tank, the coils really, really perform well. Um, I, there is something else I want to mention about the coils in just a bit, but yeah, considering Smock have a habit of putting dud coils out, these new ones, at least for the baby tank, have been absolutely fantastic. Loved it on the V9 Max. You know, I've loved it on here as well. No complaints there. Nice flavour, nice flavour production, nice coil life. So, great, yeah. Um, now, the fact that you, it comes compatible with an 18650, that's a pro because it gives you that option. And the fact that it auto adjusts the power as well, so you're not overstressing the battery. You know, maybe somebody who picks one of these up who doesn't necessarily know the limits of the battery maybe try, would have been otherwise trying to pull 100 watts through a single battery and that may have caused stress. So the fact that they've get, put that option in, great. I do actually like it. Now we'll get on to the cons of it now because it pretty much covered everything else. <laughs> now the first con for me, I've got to mention the weight. The weight of it is going to be a bit of a con for people. You know, it's a lot heavier than what I expected it to be. So, where it's not exactly portable in the sense of you can just carry it in your hand, you are going to feel that weight in there. So, that is a bit of a con. Next con for me is going to be the fact that there's no turn off function through the fire button. Now, naturally, if I'm clicking something five times, it, it locks the device. So there's no manual turn off unless you go into the menu system. Not really a fan of that, to be honest. Would have preferred that over a lock. Maybe the navigation button's lock on the device. But there you go. If you hold the two buttons down, it does lock it as well. So uh, two lock systems and no turn off. That's a bit of a strange choice you've gone with. Hopefully you fixed that with a firmware update since it came out. Um... I'd say maybe the resistance is a little bit off. And um, this is shown as 0.17 instead of 0.15 at the standard coil. But that's a little bit picky if you're using a sub ohm tank. Maybe you, you'll notice the difference if you're building your own coils, but it's not a major difference. Um, other than that, there really isn't that many cons. I'd say it's not a bad device. It actually is something that it's only going to appeal to certain people but if it does appeal to you you'll absolutely love it so we'll get into the overall of this now and overall this is a brilliant little kit well when i say little it's obviously not that little but it's not a bad kit it performs really well plenty of battery life from a single 21700 it's easy to use, it's comfortable to hold, fires really well, fires really fast, as you can hear. It's just an overall simple system. Now, I think to sum this up, is it better? Now, in terms of the coils, the coils compared to the old Prince coils, I'd say are better. And what I didn't mention before is that what I have found going from other tanks I've brought to you recently to this is that the flavour isn't that as strong. You know, it's still got a nice flavour, especially with fruits, but you're not going to get like an absolute pow, really strong flavour through them. But the coil life does seem to make up for that. But comp comparing it to the old version, this is a better version. The strange thing for me is that they've gone backwards in terms of from two batteries to one, but... It is a better kit. It's much better made. It feels quality. It vapes really well. And yeah, it's one of these things. It's going to be a niche design, whether it appeals to you or not. Obviously, that's up to you. But for me, I've absolutely loved using it. I certainly have. I've even wrote a there'll be a review going up live on the Vape Pocket Guides. If you go and check Panels of the Vapes now, there's a review on there for this. So yeah, it's. I actually really like this design. I really would recommend it if it does appeal to you. Um, just m keep in mind that the tank that you get with it isn't going to blow you away, but it's going to be a nice kit tank. So yeah, that was the Mag Grip kit. 
hopefully you enjoyed the video um coming up soon i'm gonna have some really interesting products i haven't decided exactly yet what i'm gonna be starting but hopefully some really good products to come to you and so definitely check them out and um, as i always say thank you for watching i really appreciate it stay safe and keep vaping